Shearer. And I'm Kenny Reichman. Here's what's going on this week at Iona. Week of the Peacemakers this upcoming week, starting on Sunday with the Week of the Peacemaker Liturgy at 7 in the Aragoni Center. The whole week is full of talks and service projects as well as diversity programs. The week is booked, so check out the full schedule of events on Iona's website or in the This Week at Iona email. Attention all seniors out there, Too Many Nights to Graduation is this Friday from 8 to midnight in the Burke Lounge. Tickets are being sold in OSD, so get yours today. Next Friday, the 11th, Soka is hosting the Dollar Wine Dance Party from 10 to 2 in the Burke Lounge. Tickets are only $1 for students and three for guests. Women's basketball has an exhibition home game with Philadelphia on Friday starting at 5. Next Friday is the Iona College tip-off tournament. It will begin with Iona vs. North Carolina A&T at 11-11, followed by Michigan State vs. Villanova at 145. The championship and consolation games will be on Saturday at noon and 2.30. Remember, if you have any announcements or events that you'd like us to mention in the show, contact me at jshearer1 at iona.edu, which is on your screen. All right, Allie, now let's take a look at what happened last week at Iona. I'm Allie Madano, and this is what happened last week at Iona. The Iona players kicked off their annual fall comedy on Thursday with a performance of The Matchmaker by Thornton Wilder. Performances ran from Thursday to Sunday in Dorley Auditorium, and the feedback from the play was positive as always. Maureen McNulty played Dolly Levi in the lead, accompanied by several other talented Iona players. Iona's Inter-Residence Council hosted their Halloween party in La Penta's End Zone on Friday, and many came out dressed in creative costumes to kick off Halloween weekend. Over the past few weeks, residential life students have been hard at work decorating their residence hall door with creepy, crawly, spooky Halloween decor for the campus-wide door decoration competition. At the Halloween party, one lucky room of students was named the winner and received a prize. For everyone else, a good time was had amidst music, dancing, food, games, and giveaways. The biggest news story of last week was the official inauguration of Dr. Joseph Nyer, eighth president of Iona College. Several activities surrounding the inauguration took place, and Iona was buzzing with excitement as a new chapter of leadership began. Cram the Van, an outreach program to support U.S. troops in Afghanistan and Iraq, kicked off during homecoming week, but was also part of the presidential inauguration festivities. The goal of Cram the Van is for every member of the Iona community to donate gifts, necessary items, or monetary donations for our troops overseas. Cram the Van will continue through Veterans Day, so I encourage you to participate. The week of the presidential inauguration was one filled with events. On Thursday, the Gale Inauguration Fest took place at noon. Students, faculty, and alumni gathered in Mulcahy Gymnasium to celebrate with food, activities, and performances by many Iona clubs and teams. After this Spirit and Service Fest, the inaugural mass and reception was held, and over 250 members of the Iona community were in attendance. The Hagen School of Business trading floor is now officially up and running after the ribbon cutting ceremony took place last Thursday. Friday boasted a series of lectures regarding learning, and at 1 p.m., Dr. Joseph Nyer was officially inaugurated as Iona College's eighth president. We are confident that President Nyer will lead our college well, and that the future of Iona looks bright under his leadership. Double Vision, a collaborative experience, is a performance event that premiered on campus last week. Talented students, staff, alumni, and gales alike wowed an audience with poetry readings and musical performances, all of which were original creations. Similar to Coffee House, the aim of Double Vision was to showcase the talents of many here at Iona. So there you have it, the biggest events on campus last week, proving that last week and every week is a great one to be a gale. I'm Ali Madano. Back to you, Jacqueline and Kenny. Thank you, Allie. Now let's pass it on over to Vic for some sports. Hey guys, it's Vic Alisea here with your Iona Sports Update. It was an exciting week for the Gales as they battled it out against some familiar foes from the MAC. But the main focus goes to the two teams that brought home yet another MAC championship. Let's pick it up with the action on Tuesday as Iona Volleyball team struggled to win a set against Siena, dropping all three sets. The Iona College men's water polo team finished off its home schedule Tuesday evening with a matchup against rival Fordham University. Freshman Jake Lloyd contributed two goals as Iona won in a 10-9 thriller. As for the action on Friday, congratulations to the men and women's cross-country teams. The men captured their 21st straight MAC title as the women won their seventh. Junior Holly Rowland's time of 23 minutes and 44 seconds shattered the MAC championship 6K mark, 
by 41.1 seconds. Later that day, both soccer teams were in action. The women were unable to get anything going as they fell to Niagara 4 to nothing. On a positive note, the men's soccer team defeated St. Peter's at home by a score of 3 to 1. Sophomore MJ Nestor tallied his first collegiate goal in that one. Wrapping up the day was the men's water polo team back in action as they concluded their 2011 season with a W. Sophomore Matthew Stelnicki recorded three goals and an assist as the Gales top Connecticut college 17 to 11. The snowy weekend began with the swimming and diving team winning by a score of 144 to 78. The Iona women's volleyball team continued to struggle, dropping all three sets to Ryder down in New Jersey. Sunday showed a number of cancellations due to the inclement weather. The men and women's rowing teams weren't able to compete in the fall metropolitan championships. The soccer teams, however, were able to play their games as the women finished off their season with a one-on-one tie against Canisius, while the men laid the smackdown on Manhattan 2-0. To conclude the week, the volleyball team rebounded against Loyola, sweeping all three sets. Some things to keep in mind next week are the soccer MAC championships taking place. The men will play down in Florida while the ladies compete in Baltimore. Bring it home, Gales. In addition, the women's basketball team will play their first exhibition game on Friday, November 4th. So come out and support your fellow Gales. Lastly, the Iona College community would like to congratulate former Gale and current St. Louis Cardinals pitcher Jason Mott for becoming the first Gale to win a World Series. He recorded the final three outs as the Cardinals topped the Texas Rangers in an epic and unforgettable seven-game series. Mott played for the Gales as a catcher from 1999 to 2003. He then broke his thumb in the minor leagues, converted to a pitcher, and the rest is history. Congratulations again to Jason Mott. Back to you guys. Thanks, Vic. Now let's go over to Rachel to see who won Student of the Week. Hello, I'm Rachel Chow with the Student of the Week segment. Sheena Wagman is a senior here at Iona College with a major in mass communications, concentration in TV and video. As well as having many impressive internships in the past, she is also the president of Iona College Television. People who work with her are always impressed by how willing she is to step up to the plate when something needs to be done and how tenacious she is when working for something she wants. Congratulations, Sheena. Congratulations, Sheena, and thank you, Rachel. Now let's send it on over to Amanda for some Campus Beat. Hey guys, I'm Amanda with your Campus Beats. There's a new website blowing up on a lot of campuses today, likealittle.com, or LAL.com for short, was launched back in 2010. It's designed to be a fun website where you can anonymously flirt and post feelings about other unnamed students. You can send friendly and flirty positive messages on the page that's exclusively set up for your school. The site stresses only positive comments that are not threatening in any way so that everyone feels comfortable using the site. For example, a post from the College of Wooster addressed to a blonde girl. There is no one who pulls off the black sweatpants better than you. You are an amazing athlete and probably the most amazing girl on this campus. You have a stunning smile and I wish I could always see you with that smile. Huge crush on you, girl. Keep rocking. Not only that, but users can search their own schools, look through their comments, and try to guess who they're talking about. The user Blueberry replies to the previous post thinking they know who the blonde girl is. Which brings up another interesting detail about the site. Everyone is named after a fruit. I didn't know why, so I searched the site a little deeper. On the most frequently asked questions page was the exact question. The answer? Everyone is assigned a randomly generated fruit name for each comment thread and person they chat with. Fruit names contribute to the positive, playful spirit of the site. People find it difficult to take negative comments seriously when they've been written by a blueberry. Okay, fair enough. Unlike all the anonymous sites kids use to bully or harass others, likealittle.com is not one of them. I think they've made that clear. While the site seems like an easy way to flirt, focus primarily on college students, I'm not sure how beneficial it is. Iona's page only has one post so far. It's not a dating website, so I feel it's a bit juvenile and maybe a better fit in a high school setting. However, I suppose it could be fun. But if you're seriously looking for a relationship, you should try something else. That's just my opinion. Check it out for yourselves, www.lal.com. That does it for this section of your Campus Beats. Over to Richard with your Campus News. Hello everybody and welcome to Campus Beat for this week at Iona. I'm Richard Giacovis. The stories we're working on this week, there's a new resource in town for off-campus students. Launched this past August, the Gale Community Ambassador Program seeks to educate students living off-campus as well as provide positive community relations. Living off-campus adds unknown responsibilities to the average student that chooses to make the move. Many students that live off-campus are not familiar with the understanding of safe and legal housing. In the past, these problems have been addressed 
through publicity and slogans. When too many students were living in off-campus spaces, the Office of Off-Campus Housing invented the U plus two campaign. This campaign sought to remind students of the legal number of residents that are permitted in one dwelling. In recent years, Iona has not had a strong reputation in the New Rochelle community. Neighbors of off-campus students complain about noise levels, parties, and a variety of other issues. These problems have caused unnecessary strife in Iona's relationship with the community as a whole. The GCA is a student leadership position designed to help students that already live off campus as well as students that are considering the move out of the residence halls. And now to a developing story that uh, we've been working on this week. The Deli Mart located on uh, the corner of North Avenue has been cited for permit violations. They do not have a permit and can no longer stay open for 24 hours. We spoke to one of the employees, his name is Gus Albrashi, and uh, here is that report. And we've been open 24 hours since the store opened, and what happened is they're telling us that since 04, no store after, can open up after 24 hours. And they decided to tell me now. And so they're telling us to reduce the hours to 11 o'clock. And why? They didn't give me no reason. They said that, that was the law. Well, we're going to apply for the permit, see if they give us a permit. And then we're going to hand this to the judge, see if this is you know, this a help. Mm -hmm. And people do need Delhi more open. And hopefully they'll just give us the permit. We, you know, we'll, uh, we'll pay for the permit, no problem. And we'll continue to uh, follow on this story. We have uh, since followed up with City Hall about the permit regulation. However, we have not yet heard back. We'll hope to update you on that come next week. But that's all for this edition of Campus Beat for this week at Iona. I'm Richard Giacobus. Thanks, Rich. Well, that does it for this week. I'm Jacqueline Shearer. And I'm Kenny Reichman. Stay classy, Iona.